Hey guys, Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at MikeMMedia and on Instagram at MikeMercadoMedia. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado21Alex and on Instagram at Mercado2121. The lovely Nicole Mancha is on all social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. Our pop culture show, The Good Brothers, on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and More. And of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And of course, you can support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win content prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network welcome in friends to the best damn podcast in the multiverse in the universe in the spider verse in the speed force you're on the good brothers here on the mercado airwaves network here on the quarantine files I'm your host, Mike Mercado, with the one, the only, the good brother himself, Alex Mercado. What's going on, good brother? How's it going, man? Everything is everything, good brother. And on today's episode, we continue on with the wrestling theme. What do you have in store for us on the Quarantine Files, good brother? So I figured we'd double down on it, and we are doing tag team wrestling. Now, we just had a lively debate about we wanted to, we were considering doing tag and fashion together. But Mike convinced me that there were, that the whole factions could be its own list. So we're going to separate that. And we're going to do strictly tag team wrestlers right now. And I'm actually really excited about that. Because this, this opens us up for a bigger conversation. And now we go from 10 picks to 20 picks. So I actually completely agree with Mike on this. And we're going to stick to just tag teams today. And don't uh, think that it was lost on me, the doubling down. As we talk about our favorite tag teams here on The Quarantine Files, hopefully you guys are all being safe and sound. Please check out the archives. We've had an awesome list of great lists, good brother, that you could check out. We've done Cartoon Network originals, Nickelodeon originals, top sitcoms, animated shows, wrestlers. It's been an awesome time that we've been at least trying to make an awesome time during these COVID-19, a.k.a. coronavirus troublesome times but good brother why don't you and i do what we do best and win tag team gold as we give our top five tag teams in wrestling history and i will start us off at number five. Oh, what a rush good brother i have animal and hawk i have the road warriors i have the same oh they're beautiful so both the good brother and i at number five have the road warriors for me the reason i have them at number five is they are the archetype of the badass tag team they're and of course kayfabe they're from chicago not really from chicago shoot wise which is a little disappointment but in kayfabe they are from chicago they just look badass they didn't sell for anybody you knew that their matches were really impactful because they really did lay in their stuff and it it really was just wrestling at its purest when we think about classic wrestling, when we think about the 1980s, we think about studios, we think about the territories. That's who the Road Warriors are. They're not nostalgia. They're walking history. And the fact that they were so cool and they also incorporated so much of our hometown, I think it was inevitable that the Road Warriors will end up on this list. Definitely a little too old for us to necessarily say, yeah, you know, we watched every one of their matches and everything, but their impact is just as much. If you're a sports fan in the city of Chicago, you know about the 1985 Chicago Bears. If you're a wrestling fan in the city of Chicago, you know about the LOD, you know about the Road Warriors, you know about Animal and Hawk. That's why I have them at number five. Why did you have them on this point on the list? It's pretty much the same reasons as you, where they're a staple of Chicago, because that's where they were announced from. They were these two just big, athletic men who dominated the dominated the tag team division, dominated the field, and from WCW, WWE, and they were, New Japan even, they had some of the best tag team moves. I think that was one of the first guys you really saw. Everything they did was tag team oriented. So the moves were the same. The wardrobe was the same. The entrances, they rode on the motorcycles with the big football pads with the spikes coming out of it. And like you said, I think maybe even though we were too young to appreciate them, you grow up with them, and they're your hometown team. 
they're the same thing as the Bears and Cubs to us, where that's our tag team. They represent us. So I can they easily made our top five, even without us watching a lot of the early stuff. And a shout out to Paul Ellering, who one of the greatest managers ahead of his time, was also part of that uh, Road Warriors r- run. And also SummerSlam 88, when the Road Warriors had Chucky in front of the motorcycles, riding down Wembley Stadium, one of the most iconic scenes in SummerSlam in wrestling history. Bro- Good brother, at number four, I have the Brothers of Destruction. And now this one is a little bit different than the rest of the tag teams that I'm going to have on my list. This one was much more about they were brought in during the apex of the Attitude Era. They were also two of the coolest characters that we have seen in wrestling history. We talked about in the last Quarantine Files where how you and I just gushed over The Undertaker over the years. The fact that they are in kayfabe brothers so that obviously has a little emotional tie to you know the us being siblings and then there's always the cool rivalry you can't have a cool rivalry if you don't have a cool relationship you know and that's because you did want to see these two together there is something awesome about two badasses beating the hell out of each other it's the same reason the road warriors were so dynamic the difference is you had two number one guys two world champions coming together, gelling, and it looked natural. It never looked forced. Think about how many tag teams you've seen over the years of two superstars that were put together, even if they had similar enough gimmicks. We've seen it right now, you know, in in lifetime of, like, Apollo Crews and Ricochet. Yeah, that's cool, and they're very good. Excuse me, Cedric Alexander. Being put into all these different makeshift tag teams because they look good, and they're athletic, and they do flippy moves. But that wasn't the case with Undertaker and Kane. It was two characters that naturally fit together. It was two guys behind those characters that naturally fit together. And what's funny is I would argue some of their best matches with each other in the ring were as tag teams and not as opponents. That's why I have the Brothers of Destruction at number four. It's a very solid pick, and here's why. Like you said, they just molded in so well. Mr. McMahon always says they make movies. And to see them go from arch enemies to... Bro- like their brother's storyline, so they're arch enemies at first, then they become the brothers of destruction, and they, you know, they easily can go back to that even in the last year or so when they went against DX because it's such a good team and it makes sense. Like those guys just mesh so well, and this was a time we saw a lot of superstar team ups, like you know, The Rock and Kurt Angle, or Kurt Angle and Austin, The Rock and Austin, Triple H and Insert. Like there was so much of that going around that this one made the most sense, and this one felt the most, oh, I can see both of them being champion and tag champs, and it actually makes sense to me. And it's funny, you you mentioned all the different types of makeshift partners. What about the two-man power trip? If we mentioned Stone Cold and Triple H themselves, around the time of the American Badass and Kane being super ripped, that's when they also had their little... interactions with each other that they dropped the titles too and think about okay and think about how much more force the two-man power trip felt than the brothers of destruction so it really is a testament to both kane and the undertaker to make it work because think about how great triple h and austin are and it really never gelled the same as like let's say kane and the undertaker no yeah i completely agree good brother i brought to you the devil's favorite demon and the dead man himself at number four Who are you bringing to this tag team turmoil at number four? So I think this team, I have the most modern team, if I'm not mistaken. Like I said, we're trying not to give each other a list anymore for a better conversation. But my pick was the Usos. And the Usos, again, was a time around Daniel Bryan where I started getting back into wrestling. And all you really knew is where they were Samoan guys, sons of Rikishi. And I love Rikishi. I'm a Rikishi mark back in the day. He was hilarious. And to see these two twin brothers... The way they move around the ring, their style, they did the hock at a start, their, they did the, the, the frog splash, they did the super kicks, they were just so fun, and we, I, we hadn't seen a lot of that legit tag team wrestling and just tag team stars, and I think they created that with the Wyatt and the New Day, and the Usos were definitely the first of that new generation, okay, we're going to take the tag, tag team wrestling is back and it's serious again, and I think the Usos were a big reason I even got back into tag team wrestling was seeing their style. I know you got to see them in person win their first tag title, and seven reigns later, they're still dominating the tag team division. And I think it's because in a family of Hall of Famers, they almost are on top of that list when it comes to skill for skill and mic work. And that's impressive when your dad's Rikishi, your cousin's Roman and The Rock. 
the best two modern tag teams that will end up, I honestly believe this, and they're not, neither one of them are on my list, but they will end up being two of the greatest tag teams of all time, are the Usos and the New Day. And there's, there's nothing else you could say about Jimmy and Jay. I was there the night they won their first SmackDown Tag Team Championships. I even think at that point they might have been the Raw Tag Team they Championships. Were, they were just Tag Team Champions. This is before the season. Okay, so they were still the... Show to show. So it was still the black strap with the bronze uh, yep. warrior thing. Okay, so, yeah, I was there to see that. I, they obviously brothers. They are cool. Look at, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off a little bit on the Usos because I love the Usos. I love the fact that they went from Islanders, loving their tradition, to just being straight badasses from Houston. I love the fact that they're just being dumb. I like the fact that, you know, you see Jimmy and Jay on social media or on, on these uh, on these different reality shows, and they're just two dudes. They're just two homeboys. And I'm like, and I think that's why them and the New Day have such great chemistry, because they're just all boys. They're just dudes. And that comes off on, on the television. That comes off in their match. And when that one-day-ish stuff happened, it turned for me. I've always loved the Usos, but that one-day-ish was like, oh, Oh, no, I, no, these are two, like, these two would act this way if they were two UFC fighters, if they were two firefighters, if they were two bankers, they would roll together, they would roll with each other like that, no matter what, and, like, that's real to me, that's that, that's that day one-ish, man. No, I agree, and like you said, between them, the New Day, and, sadly, what could have been the Wyatt family, I think those were your new Hardys, Dudleys, Christian, and Edge trio, and at least we have the two, and I, I'm with you. I think the Usos will one day be one of the top on the Mount Rushmore of tag team wrestlers because of how they've done it in the modern era when we thought they couldn't be done. And it's funny you say that, good brother. It's time for us to get the tables. I have Team 3D. I have Bubba and Devon. I have the Dudley Boys. Now, the Dudley Boys, to me, innovators in their own right, part of some of the biggest legacy matches of all time, have been all over the world. They are the product of learning from the World Warriors. They are the product of tag team wrestling at its best. Each one of them, Bubba more specifically than Devon, did have a successful run on, its own, on his own. But as a team, there was nobody that had as best as chemistry as these two did. And during a time, Good Brother, when you had a lot of teams that were coming from different companies, so you had guys that were coming from the WCW, the ECW merger, these were two that kept their gimmick, but also adapted to WWE style, and also were able to bring in different types, and we talk about their, in their innovation that they had, but that I think is the biggest the biggest notch under their belt. All the championships that they've had, that they were given, all the, the crazy matches, they went to Vince McMahon's world and got over. And I think you can't take that away in a time where guys weren't doing that, especially right after the Monday Night Wars during the merger. That's why I have the Dudleys at number three. Yeah, I have them a little higher up, but the one thing I'll say right now is, like you said, they adapted the best to whatever culture they were in. And amazingly, they did that from very early in their career to very late in their career. They had such a longevity to them all over the world, and that's very impressive. So who did you have at number three, good brother? So this might be a very controversial pick, but I picked DX. And I'm not talking about the faction DX, because like I said, we'll save that for a different show. I'm just talking about strictly Shawn Michaels and Triple H's title run. Uh, the year, basically a year or two they did, setting up the Taker feud. Uh, fighting the McMahon, Shane, and Vince with the Spirit Squad. Everything that was just so funny. This was the first of, we were in this new PG era, but they were still getting away with some of these very inappropriate American Pie style humor. Obviously, those are two of my favorite wrestlers of all time, Triple H being one, and HBK, you know, almost making the list. And to see them together again, just as older, still having fun, still dominating, it just hit me at a really fun time, and I enjoyed Every week, I was always wondering, what is DX going to do? Whether they're posing with, you know, CM Punk or John Cena fighting the bad guys. Like, they ran that show for almost a year or two. And I have really fond memories of that year or two. I'm going to put you on the spot. This isn't the faction episode. But, good brother, who's DX did you like more? Triple H's or Shawn Michaels? I think if you're a smart fan, it's Triple H. Like, Triple H was the better DX. If you look back at anything good... It was through Triple H mostly. Like, he definitely was the forefront of a lot of that. Where Sean, I feel like, shined more toward beginning and the strict ending for the tag team is when we got a lot of our highlights of Shawn Michaels. 
and a lot of that early stuff was definitely Triple H. But to give credit to Sean, that was the the Sergeant Slaughter with the uh, the windshield wipers. That was him. A lot of the China stuff in the beginning was with him with like the cucumber oh, and the yeah, naked. It's great, Mike. I get that, but we're we're saying you're comparing a hundred percent to a hundred and one percent at this point. Absolutely. And then before I forget it, uh, you know we'll save it, but I can do this all night long. Shawn Michaels and DX was the best when he was uh, drugged up and Triple H was in the straight and narrow. But good brother, I think DX being on there is an interesting one. And I can't wait to see where you have him possibly later on in the next Quarantine Files. But moving on at number two, good brother, I have the boys from North Carolina. I have Jeff and Matt, the Hardy Boys. Charismatic doesn't even begin it. Lovers of the industry. They are just two of the best at we that we've ever had when it comes to tag team wrestling and not just that but also how they gave their body all these guys did but they gave their body to everybody you can never say that matt and jeff never gave it their all what matt hardy has done to influence the wrestling industry without vince mcmahon ever truly believing in him what jeff hardy has done to make people believe in his crazy stuntman, his his charismatic enigma personality that he has. There is something undeniable about the Hardy Boys. And being part of some of the most legendary team matches. What else can you say? And they introduced us with Lita. She had been around, obviously, before. But her, Lita, and the Hardy Boys. It's one of the best packages ever. You people want to talk about, like, Sunny and how big she was for her tag teams. Lita's impact with the Hardy Boys phenomenal it's unmeasurable i think the hardys one of the be- most important tag teams in all of history and them being shoot brothers nobody knows anybody better than those two and there's a reason why you've never heard of a bad hardy boys match that's why i have them at number two the reason the hardys didn't make my list is because i feel like out of those three tag teams we mentioned you were a fan of mark of one of those like throughout that whole rivalry and for me i liked matt and jeff separate as much as i like them as a team They were definitely at the end of my list there because that style just wasn't my interest at the time. And obviously my number one is going to be one of those teams. So I felt like I had to only pick one, and in all defense, I would put the Hardys at the bottom of my list. Like I said, I like Jeff Hardy by himself. Maybe the age was better for me. But at the time, they were just the, the two skinny guys I wanted the other two teams to be. So they were my version of the heel at the time. And I think every fan had one they liked more than the other. It's a very interesting point. And if we really aren't trying to count singles career, but obviously there is some strength in that. And Matt just was, Matt never got the same belief that Jeff did. And here's the thing. If you were able to put those two guys together, you would have the greatest wrestler of all time. If you could put Matt Hardy's will, determination, and his brain and mind for the business into Matt Hardy's abil- into Jeff Hardy's ability, into Jeff Hardy's charisma, you would have the greatest wrestler ever. Like the Hardy Boys, really by themselves together, you, there's, they're undeniable, right? Like they are one of the greatest to ever step into a squared circle. Yeah. But with that in mind, if they didn't make your list, who is at number two, good brother? Uh, number two, we're going to keep it in the family. We're going to keep it in the clique. And I pick the Outsiders. Um, and like I said. I'm not including the faction when they were in W. I'm including right before. At the time, them jumping ship, them breaking the fourth wall like that was just so interesting. And it still fascinates me to this day to hear all the stories about it. Those are two of my personal favorite wrestlers is Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. I think you can tell I have, I like these bigger, badder, tougher wrestler styles compared to a faster, quicker pace, which I appreciate. But as a child, I looked up to more of the superhero guys, and it was two of them put together leaving one of my favorite shows to go to my other favorite show and be the bad guys and be the rebels without a cause and winning titles and just dominating. And I enjoy it so much. And I hope all the wrestlers in the clique are some of my favorite wrestlers. It just ends up working out like that. And the outsiders are definitely my number two. Who do you like more, Kevin or Scott? I've always been a Scott Hall, Mark. I always thought Scott Hall was – Scott Hall to me is the best wrestler never to win the WWE Championship. And that's a list of like Roddy Piper and Mr. Perfect. I think Scott Hall was the perfect package. He just either never had the right timing. And his biggest thing is his boys came in the picture. Like if Sean and Diesel weren't there, he probably would have been the guy. But, you know, in a pond full of sharks, there can only be really one number one guy. And it went from, you know, Diesel to Sean. So I felt like he never got his appreciation. 
So he's definitely my favorite. He was always my favorite to play in WrestleMania 18. And, you know, the big thing about Scott was he was huge, man, because he had this ability to look a lot smaller until he got into the ring, and then you realize, like, how massive of a human. You know who, who he's a lot, a lot alike, and at his best, this is who he should have been? He's a lot like Drew McIntyre. Like, that, you would think that, like, that's who, but here's where I think killed Scott Hall when it comes to when I think his peak was as Reza Ramon Chico, when he was going to cut you up, was that he was, in essence, his character was this, right? A coke dealer, Scarface cosplayer. He was Scarface. So with that in mind, Vince could never put the strap on him like that. It's one thing to not put it on Perfect or Piper, you know? But I could almost get, like, the idea of, you can't have your coke dealing, razor blade naming guy as the main event of WrestleMania. So I almost understand that. And then obviously by the time we got to WCW and everybody was winning the big gold belts, he was already just suffering from the alcohol and the pills and everything. So he's a case of he could have been honestly one of the greatest of all time. And even even at all the all the roadblocks he's put up. All the demons, he still had such an impactful career. That's how talented this dude was. No, yeah, and I think it's, it goes to show you that he might have been ahead of the game in general because at the time when he was up for it, these heel champions were like, what, Yokozuna and, you know, uh, Sid Vicious, where they were these big giants more than anything, and he was almost either too good of a character or too good of a wrestler and too good of a performer where it just never could fit in that position to either put over a good baby face or dominant. Really interesting. I would love to have a, a full conversation, maybe when the quarantine ends, or maybe if the quarantine goes longer, do a whole deep dive about the, the new generation, that new era of professional wrestling. It'd be really interesting to see how you and I would talk about being more attitude era kids, but kind of remembering a little bit about like the Tatankas and the Doings and the, you know, those type of characters. So, the end of that mm -hmm. era of wrestling into the attitude era. So it'd be really interesting. Maybe one day we'll do a deep dive into that. But until then, good brother, we have to finish off this top five list. And I will run down all the picks between the good brother and I. At number five, the good brother and I both had the LOD, the Road Warriors, Animal, and Hawk. At number four, I had Undertaker and Kane, the Brothers of Destruction. The good brother himself had the Usos, day one-ish. At number, at number three, I had Devon and Bubba. I had Team 3D, the Dudleys. The good brother had Degeneration X. And I just want to add disclaimer, DX, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, not the New Age Outlaws. At number two, I had Matt and Jeff, Team Extreme, the Hardy Boys. The good brother himself had Big Sexy, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall, Diesel, Razor Ramon, the Outsiders. And at number one, good brother, I have the kings of the TLC. I have Edge and Christian, two guys who weren't brothers, but probably made you believe more than anybody that they were brothers. They were so beloved as a tag team, as heels, and as baby faces. Always had great tag team matches. Before TLC was a thing, that ladder match between the Hardys and Edge and Christian for, I believe it was Terry, Tori Reynolds as their managers, that was one of the greatest ladder matches of all time, which got us to eventually the TLC matches. And what these two did outside of that tag team is so impactful. It's, it's the blossoming of Chris Bryan and Anthony Rizzo for all you Chicagoans when they won the World Series at 24 and 27. You're like, these guys are going to be special. And by the end of it, they had won all the tag teams. And they both were going to end up in the Hall of Fame after multiple world championships. Edge and Christian, number one for me, that's the best tag team of all time. I love Edge and Christian, and they're personally, on those three were my number two. Like I said, I was only going to put one of those three on the list to make it more interesting. Uh, I guess I'll just go into my number one and we'll talk. Is mine is Dudley's. I think brothers also, according to the storyline, they were also brothers. They just did something that no one else could, is that they were just a tag team duo, and they never wanted to be separate they they mesh so well, and they like I said, I mentioned it earlier, they can go to New Japan, they can go to WCW, they can go to ECW, they can go to TNA, they can go to AEW, WWE, NXT, and they would still find a way to be modern and innovative. And you know, you can tell. I think what we can tell with these groups of tag teams is the bond they have on the outside. Because every tag team we've mentioned, these guys are into their old age, still very close. 
And I think that goes to show you why they were so dominant, because there was definitely a bond there being tag team wrestlers. And I think the Dudleys just always had one up on everyone about being the most legit tag team wrestlers in, honestly, I would say in all of wrestling history. I think the Dudley Boys are the greatest and will always be the greatest tag team, with maybe the exception of the New Day coming up on them. I think right now we're living on the renaissance, or we're coming at the end of the renaissance of great tag team NXT has some really nice tag teams, and, you know, wrestling will always produce good tag teams. The problem with the great tag team is eventually one of the guys, you know, there's exceptions to the rules, obviously, but typically speaking, somebody ends up, Vince, or who rises, someone's going to rise. And and I didn't want to say it that way, but yes, the better one comes up. It's very rare that both people go up, and I think the Dudleys, Bubba really is the superstar in that group. Devon held his own. Don't ever doubt that. And together, they are literally a power force. They're probably the most intelligent tag team where you see both these guys are still working for younger companies as writers and producers. And I think that goes to show you the intelligence of their style. And, you know, Devon's one of the best brains WWE has right now and Bubba over at Ring of Honor. So I think that goes lost sometimes how smart they really are. And then I talk about chemistry. You mentioned that. The Edge and Christian podcast, what they did not only on the network, but what they were doing just on a podcast network themselves, they, you could tell that they were just friends. And the fact that they were friends when they were teenagers, there's something so pure about it. There's something so magical about that. And, you know, we're gushing about it because, you know, it, there's, we are a trio. And there is something special about, like, knowing the other person's tendencies and knowing that it's not just a job. It's that you both want to succeed for each other. And that's the one thing about these tag teams that you could tell that there was always this bondship of, like, we succeed together. We get over together. We'll make money together. And there's, there's an appreciation towards that. And I think if you notice, the, the, the best era of tag team and, you know, two of the teams didn't make your list, but they're all Mount Rushmore guys, is the Dudleys, Edge of Christian, and the Hardys. That TLC match is the holy trinity of tag teams. And it was because they all sold for each other, they all did a job for each other, and they all got each other over. You know, you can say everything you want about the Rock and Roll Express and the Heavenly Bodies in the South, or you could do all the AWA tag teams. A lot of these guys didn't sell for each other. A lot of these guys were very, you know, greedy when it came to their, their character at those times. Not these three tag teams. They always did the job for each other. They always got each other over. Just like the New Day and the, the Usos, where it's like, no, we're going to get each other over, and we're going to be on the Hall of Fame because of each other. We're going to get each other to the next level. And you got there's something you got to appreciate about that. No, exactly. And in my thinking was, no matter what, one of those three was going to be number one. And that's how we defer our list sometimes where I'll put them in a category and say, I'm only going to take one because it's an obvious one, two, three. And I like to talk about more teams that we can or more people or movies or TV. So I thought it was interesting that no matter what of those guys I picked, the three teams, they were going to be a guarantee number one. And I want to give a quick shout out, good brother, to the Steiner Brothers, the Hart Foundation, just a bunch of different tag teams. All right, here we go. I got a question. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so I'm going to try to end every show with an honorable mention of sorts, like you're legit number six. And then I want, in the wrestling case, I want you to pick a modern tag team you think could have made this list in five. Love it. All right. You want me to start off? Yeah, you can go ahead. Let's start with your honorable mention, your legit number six. The Steiner Brothers. Okay, good. You know, the Steiner Brothers are, are two legit. Scott Steiner, one of the coolest guys in wrestling, one of the craziest guys in wrestling, but two brothers that were legit shoot wrestlers from the Midwest, and they they look like two guys that would beat the shit out of you. Like, there's something cool about They were legit. Like, again, they're one of those guys who were, you just point at them, like, those guys are professional wrestlers. They're brothers. I wouldn't say anything about their mom. Yeah, no, I agree. I I like the Steiner brothers. My personal one was Latino Heat with the Eddie and Travel run for that year of them being heel tag team champions and all the fun stuff they did. And this almost basically leading up to Eddie's big push. So that was my number six, and it almost made the list. Lie, cheat, and steal came from that. That's where all of that started from when they would go to the golf course or they would go to the old ladies' pool thing. Like, those were some of the funniest vignettes. That's when Eddie really started to shine and get to another level. Like, that, that Eddie stuff was really, really good. And Chavito's biggest moment was definitely that Latino Heat, those tag teams together. All right, so the next question is I want you to pick a modern tag team. And the only rule I have for this is they couldn't – you know, I, I want you to pick someone within the year 
that's been successful instead of like a new day or Usos. Cause again, we've already talked a lot about them. So like we did with the single star, maybe an NXT guy or a recently bumped up team. Fascinating question. When you take out the Usos, the new day, when you take out Miz and Morrison, new, new, very new to the viewer's eyes. I would say then red dragon for all our indie fans. I would say the undisputed era. They're the guys who, if you were to say that they were in a time machine and they came from 1980s, AWA or from 1994 mid South, that Kyle O'Reilly and Fish would be those guys. And Kyle O'Reilly could be a heavyweight champion one day. They both know how to speak on the mic. Well, especially Kyle O'Reilly. They both are so, they have so much chemistry in the ring. And they're great bad guys. But the mannerisms too, like when, when O'Reilly comes down with the, uh, with the belt, pretending like it's a guitar, and the way Bobby Fish is always very serious, always kind of looking around, always scouting, looking like he's some guy from the 1950s with a fish hook, you know, like... I love the Undisputed Era. I think Red Dragon is the best modern-day tag team that if they never want to push Kyle O'Reilly, they can make them the, the gold standard of, of tag team wrestling. Who do you got? No, I completely agree. Undisputed Era in general is just one of my favorite things in, ref- in modern wrestling. Uh, my underdog pick would have been the Street Profits, and I just think they're getting set up for such a big push. They already won the titles. They're so charismatic. They're so sellable. They got Bianca Belair up there now. I just enjoy watching them. They're such a fun team, and you can tell they both can be superstars, even on their own, and they're having a good time doing what they're doing now, and I think that's something we saw in early Usos and New Day and Wyatt that I want to see continue. Absolutely, and Montez Ford can absolutely be the future WWE Championship, so there's something definitely special about the Street Profits, and again, when the Undisputed Era comes up at one point, there's your your next rivalry that they already had in NXT that they're just going to bring over to one of the main roster shows, so definitely. Good, brother. What a fun list. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and run it back down then. At number five, we both had LOD, Animal, and Hawk. We had the World Warriors. At number four, I had the Dead Man and the Big Red Machine, the Brothers of Destruction. At number four, the good brother had Jimmy and Jay, day one-ish, the Usos. At number three, good brother, I had the Dudleys with Devon and Bubba. You had D-Generation X, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H. At number two, I had Matt and Jeff, Team Extreme, the Hardy Boys. You had Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, and Diesel Kevin Nash, The Outsiders, some of the most influential guys that kicked off the Monday Night War. And at number one, I had the kings of the TLC. I had Edge and Christian. You had, at number one, bringing a bunch of tables, the Dudley Boys. What did you think about our top five tag teams of all time? I really enjoyed it, and I'm glad we got to talk about all the tag teams. Like you mentioned, the Steiner Brothers at the end, where there are so many good tag teams that it was kind of hard, actually. And that's why I kind of... You know, you were right about separating the factions because that would have made it even harder, I think. So I think we could easily say that the Dudleys would be the number one on this list. But for me, I think if you don't put all three, it's sacrilegious. So I would say all three, the Holy Trinity, you don't have one without the other, would be the number one tag teams of all time. And I think if we were just going to leave here with a, an objective list, it would be the Holy Trinity, and then it would be, and this is for modern wrestling, so I'm saying from 2000 moving forward, okay, just because I think that's fair for this, what I'm about to say objectively, the, the, the top five would be the Holy Trinity of the, the Hardys, the Dudleys, Edge and Christian, and the New Day Usos. I agree. I mean, that's for me, personally. I said, we're, we're going to keep the New Day for factions, and, you know, maybe another team can jump up even more, but the Usos, like I said, they're definitely the next coming, and they're only getting better, and they're just stacking up title wins after title wins, and they have no visible – they're not showing that they're going to slow down. So I don't see how they can't even get higher in stock. Well, you know what could get somebody higher in stock is a team that you brought up, a potential storyline, imagine, of Jimmy and J.D. Usos versus the Street Profits. That is something that I want to just mention here now because who knows, that might be your next – New Day Usos. Who knows what happens when Undisputed Era comes up 
and they meet the, the new Raiders. day. AOP. AOP, the Viking Raiders. When they go somewhere else. There's, we had, didn't even mention the revival. We never mentioned DIY. We didn't mention some of the guys over at NXT UK. There's a bunch of tag teams right now, and we didn't even mention some of the stuff going on in AEW. We, we see you, Pentagon and Phoenix. We see you, Matt and, and Nick. Yeah, we see you, Hangman and Kenny. We, we, we see these tag teams. We know that it is so strong, but you can't compete with some of the guys that – the E have brought out. I mean, it is what it is. No, I completely agree. And it's just exciting to see where tag team wrestling is. It's only getting better, and I'm excited that it is. You know what? And since we're here, let's let's do it really fast for all the fans who have stuck around this long. Who's your favorite AEW tag team right now? See, I'm glad you asked, Mike, because that's going to set up our next episode, which is going to be our top five. Outside of any sort of WWE association, we're going to try to make a list of our favorite, you know, AEW um New Japan, Ring of Honor, just any indie wrestler, including AEW. We're going to link a list of that because I think it deserves its own list, and I think we can easily have a good conversation about their tag teams and their singles people. Ooh, that's super exciting. You guys got a scoop scoop here on the Quarantine Files. I didn't even know that that's where this curveball was going, so it's super, really, really fun. Where does Darby Allen end up in our list? Does Cody... Hi. Does Cody make this top list? I don't know. We'll find out, and we'll definitely get into a virtual cyber fight about it. But I know we didn't end this episode, good brother, because you and I love tag team wrestling, and we love that you each joined us here on the Quarantine Files on the Good Brothers here on the Mercado Airwaves Network as we gave you our top five tag teams of all time. Good brother, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how did you? How did you like all this? How are you feeling Right now, during uh, post WrestleMania, not knowing exactly what WWE is doing, how's uh, how you feeling? Uh, you know, you said WrestleMania was really good. We talked about it on Sports on the Couch. Obviously, Monday Night Raw, the one they filmed, was definitely the same time frame as that. They were announced that we're going to get brand new at least Friday SmackDown and one more Raw. So I think that these are going to be the bigger shows that we need to look forward to. And Monday was kind of just a carryover to show up some almost NXT light talent where it was raw guys, but it was the younger guys putting on decent matches for no real purpose though. Well, good brother. We will be able to discuss all of that and much more on our next episode of the quarantine files. But until then you guys can follow the good brother himself on Twitter at Mercado two one Alex and on Instagram at Mercado two one two one. I'm on Twitter at Mike and media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado media. Like us on Facebook at Mercado airwaves. Subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And if we really appreciate it, like, rate, review, and share us wherever you get your favorite podcasts at Mercado Airwaves. We have a bunch of cool podcasts and interviews in our archives. If you're looking for something to listen to while you're doing home workouts, if you're walking around the park, if you're at work by yourself, we have a lot of cool stuff for you. Pop culture, true crime, sports, and everything in between. Check it out at Mercado Airwaves. For the good brother himself, Alex Mercado. Adios. I'm the good brother, Mike Mercado. We'll see you in the next episode of The Quarantine Files on the Good Brothers here on the Mercado Airwaves Network. Hey guys, Mike here from Mercado Airwaves. We want to thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network. And if you want to see what we're up to outside of the station, please follow us all over social media. I'm on Twitter at Mike M Media and on Instagram at Mike Mercado Media. You can follow the good brother Alex Mercado on Twitter at Mercado Two One Alex and on Instagram at Mercado Two One Two One. The lovely Nicole Mancha is on all social media platforms at Typing When Tipsy. You can follow the network on Twitter at Mercado Airwaves. Our pop culture show, The Good Brothers, on Twitter at Good Brothers Pod. Our true crime shows on Instagram at Murder Mysteries and More. And of course, like us on Facebook at Mercado Airwaves. You can see all our videos on YouTube.com slash Mike Mercado 2333 or by searching Mercado Airwaves Network. We play video games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Mercado Airwaves Network. And of course, you can support our network by finding a tier just for you, whether you want early access, you want to be part of polls, you want to win content prizes by visiting us at patreon.com slash mercado airwaves and we really appreciate it wherever you get your favorite podcast to like rate review and share us and please spread the word for the good brother alex mercado for the lovely nicole mancha i'm mike mercado thank you so much for all the support you've given us here on the network